Hello, I'm Brom Decimate with Flanders Scientific, and today we're going to take a look at calibrating the FSI XM310K with Light Illusion's new Color Space CMS. Other XM series monitors can be calibrated in a similar fashion, but make sure to follow specific guides and information for the monitor you intend to calibrate, as some procedures or recommended practices may vary by model. To start, we're going to go to the color menu on the monitor to make sure our settings are set up appropriately for the calibration we intend to perform. First, we want to verify that the color system is set to light space. Next, we will set the range to match the range of our test pattern generator. In this case, we will be calibrating with DaVinci Resolve as our test pattern generator, and we will be calibrating in video range, so we will select video range on the monitor. Then from the gamut selection, we will select the memory position we plan on saving LUTs to. In this case, we will be calibrating for Rec. 709, so we will set the gamut option on the monitor to the BT709 memory position. Next is an important consideration regarding the luminance selection. The XM310K can operate in either a static backlight mode or a dynamic backlight mode. The dynamic or modulated backlight mode will give us the greatest contrast ratio, and it is our assumption that most users will utilize the XM310K in this way the majority of the time. However, for some applications, like mimicking standard LCD contrast ratio performance, it may be useful to use the monitor in a static backlight mode configuration. We'll start by calibrating the monitor in the static backlight configuration, then we'll show calibration in dynamic mode. By setting the luminance mode selection to 100, the monitor will be configured for an SDR-appropriate static backlight peak luminance of approximately 100 nits. The custom selection can also be used here in combination with the luminance custom slider to increase or decrease the peak luminance as you see fit. In this static configuration, we can leave temperature and EOTF set to default. Next, we will open Resolve and ensure that there is media on our timeline. If you do not have media on your timeline, Resolve will not allow you to connect to color space. As a reminder, our current Resolve project is also set up to video range to match the video range setting selected on the monitor. If you are doing a full range calibration, simply ensure that both the monitor and Resolve are set up for full range. Now we will select the Color tab and from the Workspace menu select Monitor Calibration, then Light Space. A dialog will open requesting an IP address. We will obtain this address in a moment in Color Space. From Color Space, open a profiling window, then select the Hardware Options tab. From the Hardware dropdown, select Network Server, then press Connect. You will see the required IP address for connection to Resolve listed in this area. Return to Resolve and type in this IP address from Color Space and then press Connect. It is important not to press Return or close the dialog window as that will terminate your connection. So make sure that you leave this dialog window open in Resolve in order to use it as a TPG in color space. Now that we have our TPG connected, we will connect our probe. To do this, we will click on the Probe Options tab. We've selected CR100 in the Probes dropdown as we'll be using the color imagery research CR100 for calibration. If our CR100 is not already connected to our computer, we'll plug it in now and press Rescan to find the attached probe's COM number. Select this then press Connect. Once connected, we'll verify that we have the correct XM310K matrix selected on the probe. We'll then set Sync Frequency to Auto, and set Extra Delay Time to at least 0.25 seconds. With our probe and TPG both connected, the next step is to connect color space to the monitor. To do this, we'll open an additional profiling window. One thing I like to do to keep the profiling window separate is to give this profile window a name by clicking on Graph Options, then Rename, and then I type in a name that lets me know that this is the window used for communicating to the monitor. So I'll call this Monitor Connection Window and press OK. You can see that when I do this, the profile name gets populated at the top of the window, making it easy to identify. Now I'll click on Hardware Options, and then from the Hardware dropdown list, I'll select FSI XM. A network address field is presented here, and in this dialog, you want to type in the IP address of the monitor, which can be found on the monitor system menu. If your monitor is not already connected to the same network as your profiling computer, you'll want to connect it at this time. The monitor will obtain an IP address via DHCP, 
or if you prefer, you can set a static IP. See the XM user manual for details on IP connectivity. So in this case, the IP address of my monitor is 10.1.10.30, so I'll type that in and then press connect. This area will light up green and say connected if a successful connection has been made. Once connected, we will set the gamut selection to match the gamut selection active on the monitor. We'll set this to BT709 as we are calibrating for Rec709, and that was the selection we made at the beginning of this video. Next, we will select the 1D plus 3D option in this load dialog, then select Unity Bypass in the Select LUT dropdown, then press Upload. What this is doing is loading Unity LUTs to the monitor's BT709 memory position to ensure that we are starting at a neutral, uncalibrated, and native wide gamut place on the monitor ahead of profiling the display. We will repeat the same process for the back 1D LUT position. The back 1D LUT position is only accessible in static backlight modes, so this step is not necessary in dynamic mode. But since we are doing a static backlight calibration first, we'll go ahead and do this now. Now that our monitor, probe, and test pattern generator are connected, we can profile our monitor. To do this, we will return to our first profiling window, then click on Hardware Options and verify that the Calibration Patches option is set to Automatic. Then we will click on the Display Characterization tab and from the Mode drop-down select Grayscale Only. We could also select a larger profile set, like a 17-sided cube, but the XM310K is quite linear, so we suggest starting with a simple grayscale-only selection. Even if you do decide to run a larger profile, doing a quick profile like grayscale-only is a good way to verify that all equipment and software is functioning as expected. Now that this is selected, we will simply press Start to begin the profiling process. ColorSpace will send RGB triplet information to Resolve. Resolve will generate those test patches, and the probe will read these and have them logged by the software. Once complete, hit OK, and then click on the Graph Options tab where you will name and save the profile you just ran. Give the profile an easy-to-identify name. We will call this one A1XM310K Static Unity All. Press OK, and then importantly, remember to hit the Save button. The next step is to generate our calibration LUT. We'll start by opening a LUT tools window in color space. Then from the source gamut, we will select our target color space. In this case, Rec 709. Then from our destination dialog, we'll select the profile we just ran. Next, we have an option here to limit our peak luminance. By typing in 100 nits here, our LUT will target a display peak luminance of 100 nits. Then finally, we'll give our LUT a name. We'll call it Rec 709 Static. Then we'll click on Create to generate the LUT. Once generated, we can see that the color space coverage is 100%. Now we can press OK. Then importantly, we will need to click on this Manage LUT button and press Save to make this LUT available for upload. Once that is done, we can minimize the LUT tools window and return to the monitor connection profiling window. We will click on Hardware Options as we did before but this time, instead of selecting a Unity Bypass LUT, we'll select the LUT we just saved from the drop-down list. Now with that R709 static LUT selected, we'll move to the Load dialog and select 3D as we want to save our calibration LUT to the 3D LUT position. We'll then verify that we are still saving to the BT709 memory, and then we'll press Upload to save the LUT to the monitor. The dialog will indicate loaded and then return to a green connected state when done. Our LUT is now saved to the monitor and we can verify our results. To verify results, we will return to the other profiling window, click on display characterization, and then select a profiling mode to use for verification. In this case, we'll use the memory colors with secondaries option as my verification, both because these colors are ones we care a lot about, like earth tones and skin tones, and because it is a separate set of data readings than the ones used for calibration. So a more thorough way to verify our calibration rather than simply reading the same values as before. We then press start and our validation run will begin. Once complete, we can take a look at our results and despite only having used a very small grayscale only profiling method, our volumetric view, gamma, RGB balance, and grayscale DE charts all look quite good. 
Again, we could do a much larger display characterization, and there's no real harm in that, but the significantly larger investment of time would likely only give us marginally, if at all, better results in this particular scenario. However, those larger display characterizations can certainly be much more useful when targeting more complex targets or less linear displays. Now that we've shown how to perform the calibration in static backlight mode, we will take a look at how a dynamic backlight calibration differs. We're going to calibrate for exactly the same target, REC 709 SDR, but this time in dynamic backlight mode, which will give us a much higher contrast ratio. We'll cover HDR calibration separately later. To start, we'll go to the monitor's color management menu, and we will change the luminance selection to dynamic. Next, we will return to the monitor communication profiling window we have open in color space, and we will reload Unity LUTs to the front 1D and 3D LUT positions for the REC 709 memory position we will be calibrating for. As mentioned earlier, we do not need to do this for the back 1D LUT as this is disabled in dynamic luminance mode. Once we have loaded Unity LUT successfully, we will return to the display characterization profiling window and start a new profile. We will again do a grayscale only profile, but you could select a cube based profile instead if you prefer. While this is running, we will go ahead and move to the Graph Options tab and give this new profile a name. We'll call it A1 XM310K Dynamic Unity All. Once the profile is complete, we'll click OK. Then from the Graph Options tab, we'll press Save to save our new profile with the name we just assigned it. We will then open the LUT Tools window once again to build our calibration LUT. So again, we will select REC709 as our source gamut target. Then for our destination, we have selected the profile we just ran. We will again define our desired peak luminance in the Limit Luminance field as 100 nits, and then we will give our new LUT a name. In this case, R709 Dynamic. Then we will press Create to generate the new LUT. Once the LUT is complete, we will again click on Manage LUT, then Save. We can now move back to our Upload window, verify we are saving to the BT709 3D LUT position, then from the Select LUT dialog we will find the R709 Dynamic LUT we just created, and then press Upload to save the LUT to the monitor. And once again, we can verify our result to make sure the process went well. As you can see, the dynamic and static workloads for SDR calibration are quite similar, with the primary difference being the monitor lumen setting and the restricted access for the back 1D LUT position. The result will of course also be a bit different as the dynamic mode will have an exponentially higher contrast ratio. We hope this video has been helpful in showing how you can calibrate the XM310K with color space in both static and dynamic backlight operation modes. If you have any questions on calibrating this or other FSI monitors, please reach out to our support team at support at flanderscientific.com. Thank you.